All right. So I've turned on the recording. Everyone, can everyone hear me okay? It's fine? All right, good. Okay, so let's pray and uh, we will get started. I'm sure uh, other students will join us in the next uh, few moments. Um, students will connect to the class. Um, so uh, let me just uh, ask somebody to pray. Um, Aradhana Kamble. Okay, you got your video on. Would you like to pray? And then we will start. Lord, thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. Lord, help us all. In Bible College, Lord, help to all students and me also, Lord. Uh, you take control of all. And thank you for this day. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Aradhana, and welcome to everybody else who's uh, just connected. Good morning, good evening, whichever part of the world you are. Uh, good afternoon for some, maybe. Uh, thank you. All right, so let me just uh, share my screen and uh, go through a few things as we get ready to start. All right, so you, all of all of you, all of us would have logged in to BC 101, the Google Classroom, and you've got, you know, you clicked on the link for the Google Meet and you joined the Google Meet. Um, in the classwork section is where we, you know, we will start posting things. So uh, as of now, there are two PDFs that you can download and uh, go through and we will be using them in our lectures. So uh, we will go through them today. So in case you haven't downloaded, you know, you could download them uh, now or uh, in, at any time and we'll be using these materials. And uh, later today, the video lectures will, you know, we will start posting these lectures here. Um, uh, uh, at the end of the, you know, end of the, uh, towards the end of the day, these videos will come up here. So in case you want to go back and review, you can do that, right? So just to remind you that um, this is where we will be releasing uh, content for you. And this is where you'll be able to watch videos. And later on, uh, we will be also creating your, uh, creating assignments for you here, all right? So in the classwork tab, is where you will be able to um, uh, see the assignments we create for you, right? So we will get started today. Um, this is, I'm just going through the course overview PDF. So both these PDFs that we'll be looking at today are already there in the classwork section. So uh, you could, uh, you know, download that and see, uh, see the PDF. So, just to give an overview of what we are going, what is this course about? And then the course on identity, on who, um, uh, in the New Testament, one of the most important revelations that um, we find, uh, especially through the letters of the Apostle Paul, is that about who the believer is in Christ. Right? And there are uh, several scriptures. Uh, if you, you know, some some people have tried to count it. Uh, it's definitely over 130 scripture references um, on who we are in Christ or who, the identity of the believer. And so this course is is a real journey that we make by studying everything that uh, you know that's in the New Testament or as much as we can in the New Testament about what is our real identity and who are we in Christ. Uh, we will you know, cover this in several sections. We talk about revelation and new creation and, and different aspects of our identity as we make this journey. Uh, There's just an introduction. I will, we will go into the details uh, shortly. Uh, we'll have three assessments. These are simple question answers. 
uh, based on the content we cover. Uh, there'll be one in mid-September, another one in mid-October, and one towards the end of November, uh, most likely the end of the third week of uh, November. And they just carry 30%, 30%, 40%, right? And uh, the grading scheme we have already shared with you. Uh, so remember, you need to have the you know 85% attendance and then just get a passing grade, right? Um, we will be giving you the course lectures, the PDFs, as we progress. We will release it in the classwork section. Uh, another book that we encourage you to read, it's a free book. If you go to apcw.org slash books, uh, there you will find um, a lot of our books. All our books are free. So you can download The Father's Love is one book that you could read. Uh, you will not be tested or you know uh, assessed on that, but we encourage you to read it because it complements uh, a lot of what we cover in this course, okay? Now, um, before we uh, get started, let me just uh, come back here to the, uh, the Google Meet here. Um, before we uh, you know, get into the actual course material, I just want to share a few things. One is, uh, please feel free uh, to ask as many questions as you want to on what we are discussing, okay? So don't hesitate. It's a good thing to ask questions. You know, um, uh, usually uh, when, you know, in a Sunday church service, uh, when we speak or when we preach, uh, you just have to listen, you know, the pastor or the preacher is preaching uh, and all you get to do is listen. Uh, if you have a question, you have a doubt, uh, you cannot ask. In a, in, a, in a typical Sunday service. But uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, let me just admit, okay. But this is different. Uh, we want you to engage. We want you to ask questions. Um, and, uh, you know, we can clarify things, things if you don't understand something, if something you want me to repeat, uh, maybe you didn't understand it clearly, uh, just free, free to ask questions. And I want you to keep in mind that uh, when you ask a question, uh, it's very likely that, you know, there may be three or four other people who have the same question uh, in their minds. Uh, maybe they're just hesitating to ask. So by you asking the question, uh, you're actually helping others as well uh, to learn better. Right. So although I'm going to be talking and explaining and we're going to be going through the scriptures uh, at any point in time, uh, just ask your question. Right. So you can uh, you can uh, unmute your mic uh, and ask a question. Uh, you can raise your hand by, uh, you know, there's a little hand icon at the bottom of uh, uh, your screen there. Uh, you can uh, tap on that so I will know you have a question to ask. So I will pause and uh, give you the time to ask question. Or yeah, you could just type your question in the chat, right? So uh, either way is fine. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I see a question in the chat, then I can pause and respond to that question. Now, sometimes what happens is uh, uh, on a given day, we may run out of time. Uh, so we will just pick up that question in the next lecture and uh, respond to that. So in case we don't complete answering your question, I will just continue it in the next lecture. Uh, the other thing uh, I do want to mention is that, again, let me just share my sc and the screen. Uh, the, over here in the, in the stream, uh, the class, Google Classroom stream is where we can interact Right. So, you know, like somebody has posted some comments, others have posted some comments. That's fine. So this is where, you know, you, you can post in case you have a question that comes up a little later, you know, outside of the class hours. Uh, you can post your question here. You can just any, any student can you know put your question here. Um, then uh, I will get notified and I may uh, I may respond to the question right here in the stream or I may pick up that question in the next lecture so that everybody can, you know, uh, discuss that. I mean, we can share that answer in the class. People can discuss it. So this is another way in case you have a question that comes up outside of the class hours, 
you're welcome to post things here in the class stream. Um, so the class stream is more like a discussion board where uh, we can engage in discussions, share our thoughts, right? But, um, and, and sometimes some students also post prayer requests. Um, if they have some uh, uh, urgent need, uh, they may post it here so that other students can also pray for them. Uh, so you're welcome to do that. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, uh, the only request we make is uh, please don't uh, use the class stream to do promotions of uh, personal things or things happening in your city, right? So keep this for, you know, engaging around the subject and just for uh, uh, encouraging, interacting with each other, right? So uh, we will use this uh, in a proper way, okay? All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start off with the PDF that we have given you. Uh, start off with the introduction and get into the first lesson on um, on who we are in Christ. And uh, as we go through it, uh, just feel free to um, you know understand, follow along, and ask questions as we have uh, uh, mentioned. Okay, so. Uh, you would be able to download this PDF from uh, the uh, classwork section. And uh, now let's start off with this verse, you know, Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. Uh, we're all very familiar with this verse of scripture. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Now, you know, we just pause and think about that. If we are in Christ and we are a new creation, something brand new, right? Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And, you know, we can just ponder on this verse and say, well, that's, you know, that there's a lot here. We are a new creation. So what, you know, first of all, what does it mean to be in Christ? What does it mean to be a new creation? Uh, what does it mean? All things are passed away. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, what does it really mean to me in everyday life? You know, can I be really free from all the old things uh, that once affected me? You know, and all things have become new. You know, what does that mean? You know, so our goal in this course is to understand this whole new creation that we have become. And uh, so, you know, one analogy that I like to use often uh, every time uh, I, I, I um, talk about uh, who we are in Christ uh, is to think about, and again, this is just an example, uh, to think about a, a boy, an orphan boy, let's say an orphan child, uh, abandoned in the slums, uh, with, you know, with nothing, with just nothing, you know. And, uh, you know, the, this, this orphan boy would, you know, you can just try to imagine how hard, how difficult each and every day would be, uh, just struggling for survival and uh, unsure about life, unsure about even the next meal uh, he was going to get. But imagine, and this is just an illustration, imagine that this orphan boy was adopted into the family of a very wealthy man. Just imagine he was adopted in that family. And this man, you know, gave this boy his family name, brought him to the house, just gave him everything, everything that, you know, he has, he just put it upon this little boy. You know, how, how, how transformative, how transformative that experience would be and life-changing because the rest of this boy's life and future is totally changed by what has happened. But just imagine, and again, this is just uh, something to uh, think about, just imagine that if this boy, orphan boy who has been adopted in this wealthy family uh, did not change his mentality, but he continued to, and I just, you know, I just like to look at you when I'm talking. So, um, 
suppose he, you know, just continue to think the old way, you know, as though he was still an orphan boy. Uh, his mentality didn't change. Just continued thinking the other way. And, um, uh, you know, you can just imagine him. Mean, he's living in this house where everything is there, but he comes to uh, have his breakfast or lunch, whatever. And then he packs some food and takes it back to his room it's because he's afraid that he may not get the next meal. Right, so that's his old mentality at work, but he's actually in a house where there is overflowing of food. Food overflows, so he doesn't have to worry about his next meal, or think about it if he still thinks that nobody loves him. The fact is, this wealthy man and his family love him. That's why they've adopted him, and they're giving him everything, right? Or think about you know if he runs away in all these nice clothes he has and everything, he runs back and he starts playing in the slum. <laughs> that would be just totally out of place because that's what he used to be. But now he's been, uh, his life has changed, right? Uh, the only reason he would want to go back to the slum is to tell the other people, hey, there's a way out and there's a better life that they can have and maybe help them come into uh, you know, a, a place where things are better for them. So this is just, just an example where, you know, for us as believers in Jesus Christ, our lives have been so transformed in Christ, but we have to embrace what God has done for us. You know, we have to believe that and we have to change our thinking. I'm going to change the way we live and accept what God has done for us, spiritually speaking, uh, I mean, and let that affect every aspect of our being, you know, affect, affect the way we live, affect our lifestyle and so on. But uh, very often, uh, because we don't undergo that transformation, we don't undergo that change, you know, we're still thinking the old way, we still think according to our old life. So we're not able to express you know, the new life that we have in Christ. The way God works, the way God works is that he completes the work for us spiritually. And then he says, I want you to live out of what I have completed for you. Right. So the Christian life is not, I'm striving to achieve something for God, but rather I receive something, what God has done for me, and I learn to live out of that. Okay, that's very important for us to understand, right? The, this Christian life, it's not that like I'm trying to achieve something. No, the work was done by God. Jesus did the work for us on the cross. And God says, I've completed the work for you spiritually, and I want you to live out of that in your life here on earth, right? So that's the journey we make of growing into uh, who we are in Christ, okay? And as I've shared in the, in the PDF, uh, there are many ways that this truth, this revelation will affect our lives. When you and I uh, understand our identity in Christ, you know, what God has done for us in Christ, the inheritance he has given to us, and the life he's called us to live in Christ. It will first of all change our self-image. You know, how you see yourself. You know, and many times, you know, our self-image uh, as human beings, you know, we base our self-image on, you know, so many different things, maybe our education, maybe uh, the family we were born in, maybe, yeah, you know, the connections we have with influential people, whatever, you know, we base our self-image on various things, money and wealth and so on. But those things can easily change. You know, they can be there, they cannot be there. But if you and I learn to base our self-image, how we see ourselves 
on what God has done for us. You know, that will change how you and I look at ourselves. You know, so that no matter, you know, the externals, the externals may be there, may not be there, doesn't matter. Who you are in Christ is who you really are. And that's a statement we will repeat often. Who you are in Christ is who you really are. That's who you really are. And you and I will learn to live out of that. So it changes our self-image. Understanding you know, this whole revelation of our identity in Christ, secondly, is also going to change the way we relate to God. You know, um, many times uh, people relate to God just, you know, based on, again, like this, like we said, maybe based on the works they do. And I'm not saying we shouldn't live a good life. We should live a righteous life. But our relationship with God is based, should be based on who we are in Christ all the time. You know, there may be some days when you pray for many hours. There may be some days when you don't pray. It doesn't change who you are in Christ. There may be some days when you read the Bible a lot, and some days you may not read your Bible, but it doesn't change who you are in Christ. Right? So you don't base your relationship with God, you know, based on these things. Your relationship with God is based on who you are in Christ. So you can relate to him with freedom uh, at any point. And I'm not saying we should live, we can live in sin and ignore it. No, when you're living in sin, we need to address that and, you know, ask God for forgiveness and come out of it. But I'm saying as a believer, your relationship with God is not based on how much you, things you do, but it's based on your, who you are in Christ. Thirdly, when you and I understand who we are in Christ, it will affect the way we face life situations. You know, that when we face challenges, and we will all face you know, different things in life, there will be the storms of life and there will be people who, you know, do things and all kinds of challenges, but you will always face them based on your identity in Christ. You know, you will know that in Christ, God always causes me to triumph. So in every battle, you'll face it saying, hey, I'm going to win. Sometimes the battle may be intense. Sometimes the battle may be long. Sometimes the battle may be very rough, but you are convinced that because you are in Christ, God will cause you to triumph. Right? So you learn, you and I will learn, you know, this is how we face life situations out of our identity in Christ. It'll also change the way you and I face Satan and his demonic powers. You know, so that we will be unafraid, unafraid of Satan. We'll be unafraid of evil spirits, demonic powers, you know, that when you face, you know, uh, Satan at work or when you are ministering to people, you minister out of who you are in Christ. And you're not afraid of any evil spirit or any demon or anything that Satan can do. You, uh, is my audio too low? Um, Isaac, I see your comment there. Uh, um, Can you all hear me okay? Or yes, Pastor. Okay. Isaac, can you see? Uh, okay. Uh, just see if you could increase your volume a bit. Uh, maybe I will keep my mic a little closer. Okay. Hope, hope that helps, Isaac. Okay. So what was I saying? Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, when you live out of your identity in Christ. It will make you a master of Satan and his demonic powers. You'll be fearless and bold. 
because you are in Christ and in Christ you are seated at the Father's right hand in the heavenly places. There is no higher place that God could put you and me and Satan is underneath your feet. Now many believers don't understand that or uh, that, that, that understanding, that revelation of that truth has not gripped their hearts. And so they still live in fear. Oh, what is the devil doing to me? The devil is attacking me. The devil is troubling me. Look, Satan is underneath your feet and you are seated in Christ at the right hand of God. That is your position as a believer. That is your identity. That is your inheritance. And so from there, you're looking down at Satan. You're looking down at all the demons. They're underneath your feet. So how are you going to look at them? You're going to look at them as master. You're going to look at them as Lord. You're going to look at them as, you know, you are in authority and dominion over Satan. And that's how you are going to face Satan and his demons, right? So understanding this truth of your identity in Christ is going to change how you face Satan and his demonic powers. And lastly, understanding your identity and your inheritance in Christ will also change the way you relate to other people, right? That means when you, when you look at other people, you, if you, you know, you're looking at other believers, you look at them as who they are in Christ. You know, you don't look at them as how they are just in the natural. You know, in the natural, all of us have our flaws. None of us are perfect in the natural. But you learn to see who each person is in the spirit. That, hey, that person is in Christ. And uh, in Christ, this is who they are. This is and I need to, you know, I need to relate to them based on their identity in Jesus Christ. So that is how this revelation is going to change our lives as we, you know, start journeying through this uh, in this course on our identity. It's going to really transform us. It's going to really change our lives. Okay, so whatever I've just spoken to you right now is in the introduction part of the first PDF. So you could just, uh, you know, go over that. Any questions at this point before we get into the first chapter? Any questions? Anybody? Any thoughts? Any questions? Okay, everyone's with me? All right, good. All right, so let's get into the first chapter on the PDF, um, I think, let's go there. So I've just, we have covered all of this. Um, so section one, Revelation, okay? So let's begin by reading. Can somebody just read for us John 14, verses 19 and 20? John 14, 19 and 20. Let me come back to this meet session here. Okay, good. Can somebody read John chapter 14, verses 19 and 20? Somebody can read that for us. Just unmute your mic and you can read it for us, please. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will also live. At that day, you will know that I am my father and you in me and I in you. Okay, thank you, Shani. So, in John 14, Jesus is, um, you know, uh, preparing his disciples for his departure. He's going to, you know, be crucified. And, of course, he's going to be resurrected. He's going to rise up. So he says, you know, you're, you're not going to see me, but then because I live, you will also live. John 14, verse 19. Then in verse 20, he says, at that day, that means the time after my resurrection, at that day, right, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. 
at that day, that's a time coming when you will know, that means you're going to know something, you're going to receive a revelation. And what are you going to know? You're going to know that I am in my Father, that Jesus is in the Father, you in me and I in you. So he says, look, after my death and resurrection, you're going to receive a revelation. You're going to know that I'm in you and you are in me. John 14, verses 19 and 20. You're going to, you're going to receive that revelation. And sure enough, after Jesus ascended into heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit and then through the apostles, and as we mentioned primarily through the apostle Paul, this whole revelation unfolded. Paul in his writings often says, you know, we are in Christ, we are in him. He is in us. And because we are in him, and because he is in us, this is who we are. This is how we can live. This is what we can do, right? So Jesus foretold that you're going to receive this revelation. Another way that Jesus also communicated this to his disciples before he um, was crucified and ascended is there in John 15, uh, verse John 15, let me, uh, let me can you know, uh, it's the whole passage there on um, Jesus being the wine and me being branches on the wine, but um, can somebody read verses one and two for us, please? John 15. Verses one and two. I am the true wine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does not bear fruits he pursues, so that it will be even more fruitful. Okay. So John fifteen verse one and two. So here's a different analogy or a different picture that Jesus is using to communicates to us that we are in him, he is in us. You know, this, this being in Christ. He says, I am the wine and you are branches on the wine. Uh, you are connected to the wine, right? So spiritually, and we will explain this a little later again through scripture, Spiritually, we are like a branch in the wine. That means we are actually connected to Jesus. So spiritually, you and I are connected to Jesus. Just like the branch is connected to the wine. Spiritually, you are connected to Jesus. Okay? So you and I are not distant from Jesus. It's not like every time you pray, you're trying to make a long distance call to Jesus. It's not like that. You and I are spiritually connected. 24 seven, all the time, connected. See, the branch doesn't come off and go back off and back on the wine. No, that's not the relationship the branch has on the wine. The branch is connected to the wine all the time. And that's your connection with Jesus. You are spiritually, so that analogy is in the natural, the wine and the branch. Spiritually, you and I are always connected. That's, it's like an inseparable connection. You're connected with Jesus spiritually all the time. And what is in the wine is also flowing in the branch. You know, it's not like there's something different in the branch and different in the wine. No. What's in the wine is flowing in the branch. That means the life of Jesus is flowing in you and me, in the spirit. That's what, that's the reality, that's the truth. So we need to find out, what is this life all about that's flowing in me, in my spirit? What is this wine life? What is this life of Jesus? What is it about? 
And uh, how was it going to change my life? You know, how was it going to make a difference to me, for me, and through me? Because 24-7, you are connected. And his life is flowing in you. The life of his spirit is flowing in you. So how is it going to make a difference uh, for you and me? We need to find out. And that's what we are going to do as we journey through this whole study on our identity in Christ. Right? So these are two powerful scriptures that Jesus gave before he went into heaven. And he says, there's coming a day when you're going to get to know that you are in me, I am in you. Right? You're going to receive that revelation. Now, sure enough, later on, the Apostle Paul came along. And so uh, in the notes, let me see here, in the notes, um, we are, okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 1 to 14. So sure enough, the Apostle Paul came along and um, he, in his epistles, just began to pour out this revelation for us. Right? He began to pour out this revelation. Thank you, Isaac. I'm glad you can hear clearly now. You know, and uh, so we're going to study in the epistles. What did Paul say? Right? So let's take a moment now to read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. I'm going to ask uh, uh, each person, uh, just read two verses, right? Those who haven't read so far, uh, uh, just take uh, two verses uh, and just read one after the other. Jeffina, you have a question? Or? No, uh, I just want to read. Can I oh, read? okay. Yeah, so you start off verses 1 and 2, Ephesians, verses 1 and 2, and then we go to verse 14, two verses each. Jeffina, please start. Yeah. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing you God's holy people in Ephesus, who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Yeah. Someone else? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Go ahead. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through, the, through His blood. The forgiveness of our faith passes according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight. Verse 9 and 10. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Verse 10 also, please. To be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Thank you. Verse 11 and 12, somebody, please in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in christ okay verses 13 and 14 somebody please in him you also trusted after you heard the word of the truth the gospel of our soul, of your salvation in whom also haven't believed, you were sealed with the power of the, uh, sorry, with the spirit of promise, 
who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased position to the praise of his glory. Mm, thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we just read half of this chapter, right? Ephesians chapter one, we haven't read the full chapter, but it's very interesting. If you would take a highlighter and mark how many times the Apostle Paul is talking about being in Christ. You know, and I can just show you in my Bible, um, I've kind of, I don't know if you can see it, you know, I've marked it out there starting from verse one, you know, uh, just, just, you know, looking at it, so amazing. So right there in verse one, right, very first verse, he says, to the saints who are nefarious and faithful in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Then again, in verse 3. Oh, uh, Sam, I think you clicked on your present button. You need to take that off. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Now, uh, verse three, again, he talks about, you know, the end of verse three, in Christ. Again, in verse four, he says, he chose us in him, right? Then again, in verse six, end of verse six, he says, in the beloved, the beloved is Christ, right? So he says, in the beloved. Again, in verse 7, the beginning of verse 7, he says, in him, right? So, and then you find this again in verse 10. He says, in Christ, in him. Again, verse 11, he says, in him. Again, in verse 13, he says, in him and in whom. So, about 10 times in these 14 verses, Paul is saying, in Christ, in him, in whom. He's repeating, says, look at this believer, he's talking, he's talking writing to believers, and he's saying, believers, you are in Christ. You are in him. You are in the beloved. So that's the reference point. He's talking to people who he says they're in Christ. They're in him, in Jesus and he's speaking to them. You know, just, just sharing that is like, wow, it's amazing. This is who he's talking to. People who are in Jesus, in him. And as he's addressing people, that is you and me believers who are in Christ, he is, he is using, you know, I'm just, using the word descriptors. He's using descriptors, things that describe who you and I are in Christ. And once again, you know, if you uh, circle the descriptors he uses just in these 14 verses, uh, you know, I, I have marked out about 16 descriptors. You know, and uh, you look at it, for instance, in verse, verse 3, he says, uh, blessed. So that's one descriptor of the believer, blessed. Uh, verse four, he says, chose us. So you're a chosen person. Uh, then he says, we are holy. Again, in verse four, we are holy. And in verse four, we are without blame. Then in same verse four, we are in love. That means we're covered in love. Then verse five, he says, we are predestined. Then in that same verse, we are adopted as children. Then in verse six, we are for the praise of his glory. It means we are here to you know, just glorify God, to praise his glory, bring, uh, uh, declare his glory. Uh, then he says, we are accepted. That's in verse six, accepted. In verse seven, he says, we have redemption. That means we are the redeemed. And then he says, we, are, we have in the same verse, verse seven, the forgiveness. 
Okay, so like this, and I've uh, I've listed the sixteen out in the PDF uh, notes that we put out. But you know, you can see these descriptors. So to the believer, he's saying, believer, you are blessed, you are chosen, you are without blame, you are holy, you're covered by His love. You're predestined, you are adopted, uh, you are for the praise of his glory, uh, you are accepted, uh, and uh, you are, you know, you, God is, uh, you are redeemed, you are forgiven, um, God has given you um, abounding grace. So he says, this is all that God has done for you as a believer. And this is who you are in Christ, as a person who's in Christ. So, having said all this, having said all this to these believers, Paul is saying, now I need to pray for you, or I have been praying for you. For what? That God will open your eyes so that you can understand and these things. Yeah. So that, that God will open your eyes so you can understand, you can receive a revelation of these things. And that's what he writes, you know, uh, if you read on, um, let's, uh, could somebody read for us uh, verses uh, 15 to 18, verses 15 to 18, the same chapter. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. Hmm. Okay. So what's he saying? He's saying, I'm praying for you that God, verse 17, that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in knowing him, right? So first of all, you need to know God, but it's through the Holy Spirit, through the wisdom and revelation that the Holy Spirit gives. And then he says, verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened. And the Holy Spirit should open your eyes, your spiritual eyes so that you can know the hope of his calling. That means the future that he's called you to, right? What has God called you to? I want you to know that. And then he says, and the glorious inheritance that he has for the saints. He says, I want you to know that. The inheritance that God has for his people. Right? So, for us, we need to pray, right? And say, Lord, open our eyes that we too will know you. We will know the future you've called us to. And we will know the inheritance you have for your people. Right? Otherwise, if we don't know the inheritance, then we'll be like the, you know, in the example we said, the slum boy, or orphan boy, who's taken into this wealthy family, but he doesn't understand what has happened. He continues to go back to living like a, you know, uh, in the same miserable way he was before. Right? We need to say, God, open our eyes. Give us revelation. Okay? So, we're going to go for a 10 minute break right now. And uh, we can just uh, refresh ourselves and uh, get back to after 10 minutes. 
Okay. But before you dismiss, I just want somebody to pray. Just pray for all of us and say, God, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we will know you and we will know the inheritance you've given us. Okay. Somebody lead in prayer, just a quick prayer. Then we'll go for a break, please. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, please, Jeffina. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the beautiful day, for the very first class that we attend together. God, we pray that you open our eyes and let us know who we are in Christ. We are blessed and we are chosen and called. Let us help us to open our eyes and see how much blessed we are. The things that Christ did for us on the cross, the great things that we received through Christ, what did for us on the cross. Help us to open our eyes and look into you. And let us know who we are in Christ. Let us understand the subject, our identity in Christ, and work powerfully for your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Just uh, thank you. Have a quick break. Uh, we'll see you in 10 minutes. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.